Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, everybody. Hey, look who we have here with us today, Manny Pacheco. Hey, John. Manny, good to see you. It's good to see you, John. It's good to see you, Art. Uh, brand new year, and uh, we're raring to go. <laughs> we are. I, you know, Art uh, uh, and Manny, uh, St. Patrick's Day, just around the corner. Mm. A, f a foreign holiday, maybe the, the most important holiday of the year is St. Patrick's Day. It's close to my heart. <laughs> and of course, you, it's kind of like all the holidays. They, there's always a film that they play over and over and over. For St. Patrick's Day, it's The Quiet Man, John Wayne Maureen O'Hara. Right. And here's my question to you as a Hollywood historian. I think the two of them in that film had such chemistry, such unbelievably chemis uh, chemistry. Why have I not heard about them as a pairing, as a, you know, a team of actors that have worked together on a number of films, like you do Spencer Tracy, Catherine Hepburn, or... Uh, uh, Powell, and Sergei and Bacall. Bacall. Yeah. yeah, and Bacall. Yeah. So, what is it about the two of them? They were both loved as actors, but they don't seem to be paired. Uh, I don't know historically with fans, whatever. Well, there's a couple of reasons for that, and and I agree with you. They were one of the great screen couples. They actually appeared in, I believe, between five and seven films. Uh, the most famous of which, uh, The Quiet Man. I'm a big favorite, a fan of uh, McClintock. I think that's a great pairing with John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara. But I think there's a couple of reasons. I believe that as good as Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy were solo, uh, people remember them more often together as a team. And the same goes for William Powell and Myrna Loy. I mean, Myrna Loy had a, just a terrific career solo. But somehow folks thought they were married. Whereas I believe that more people think of John Wayne be, for other reasons. I don't think they, they think of his screen pairings with women. I think they think of war pictures. I think they think of yeah. westerns, without a doubt. And in yeah. terms of uh, Maureen O'Hara, she had some real fun romantic pairings with Tyrone Power. Uh, I wouldn't call this romantic, but the very memorable pairing uh, or two with Charles Lawton, who was her first muse. But I do believe that they are one of the great screen pairs, John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara, and they made great movies that began with Rio Grande, which was the, uh, f the last of the three uh, uh, Civil War trilogies that John Ford directed. Now, remember, if you're going to consider John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara, you got to kind of throw in John Ford in, in, in the mold because John Ford would use many of the same actors and he Absolutely. was very comfortable pairing Maureen O'Hara and John Wayne. So yeah. there's a lot of reasons why you might not think of them right off the top of your head as a great screen couple, but kudos to you, John, for, for, for that consideration because it's a very accurate consideration. Yeah, you know, uh, they, uh, as I remember them and, uh, and not remembering the uh, specifics of each name as well as John might, uh, because this is John's genre, if you will. Uh, they, they always seem to have a, like a, uh, almost a love-hate rom-com that was visceral as opposed to, right. let's say, Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, uh, right. a lot of their stuff. Uh, You're absolutely right. I mean, you couldn't be more on the money, Art. You're you're just completely right. They they had this love hate relationship. Um, you know, they weren't as playful uh, as they could have been on screen, as 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 uh, Spencer Tracy and Catherine Hepburn, particularly Myrna Loy and uh, and William Powell. They were very playful. This this was more of a real. Uh, a, a, husband wife love hate kind of thing that that was much more visceral and real and sometimes a little little more snarky but truth be told behind the scenes they couldn't have been better friends uh, Maureen O'Hara had a very long career and and worked with a lot of stars everybody like I said like uh, Charles Lawton James Stewart Tyrone Power I and mean, she worked with just a number of stars uh, I, I just saw her in a John Garfield uh, pot boiler uh, just a, a day after, a day before yesterday. So she 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 worked with all the great stars, but there was a real kinsmanship with John Wayne. And John Wayne, though he worked with very tomboyish actors like Patricia Neal, 
the biggest tomboy of them all, believe it or not, despite her beauty, was Maureen O'Hara. He, she could just tussle with the boys, and she'd play poker with the boys, and she would just, she was just one of the guys. And John Wayne loved that. And they, they'd go out and, and drink. And, you know, John Wayne was married, but they had a very platonic relationship. There was one story that goes, they were out late one night, and John got just absolutely soused. So uh, O'Hara calls his wife, Pilar, and says, I'm, I'm going to bring him home. And, of course, uh, the real fun part of this thing is when they arrive to their house, to J John Wayne's house, the Duke, uh, trying to get him out of the car. He's a big guy, you know, 6'4", 230, 240. He's a big, hefty guy. But, you know, she managed to get him out of the car and, and, into, and into the house. And, uh, yeah, video, okay, yes. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Forgive me. <laughs> so yes, uh, they were. They were. There was a real tomboyish aspect to their real relationship that lasted even beyond the fact that they they might not have made any more films. But you know, they made, like I said, up to seven films into the early 1970s. As you know, John Wayne died in 1970, uh, I want to say 79. His last film was in 76, The Shootist. So, I mean, right up until almost the end of his career, he was making films with, with O'Hara. So, yeah. Well, I think you're right, Manny, that uh, the fact that John Wayne is really not thought of as a romantic lead, as a part of a couple, despite the fact that he made seven films with Maureen O'Hara, um, you're right. That that colors their their relationship. They were never thought of as a couple. Uh, That's true. And, but but you know what? He got along really well romantically a bit in the man who shot Liberty Valance with Vera Miles, uh, yeah. uh, Patricia Neal. As I mentioned before, uh, there was this really great film um, um, that he made with Donna Reed. It was a war picture. They were uh, they were expendable. Uh, I mean, it was just, I mean, he, he could be a romantic guy. I mean, he was great with Claire Trevor and Stagecoach. It's just that the chemistry was there with, with, uh, with, uh, Marie, uh, with, with Maureen O'Hara. I mean, I just think that that was, that was the couple. Now, as far as The Quiet Man goes, and of course with St. Patrick's Day right around the corner, it is just one of those classic Irish theme movies that John Ford had an affinity for. Anytime that he could throw in uh, the whole Irish... Uh, theme, or at least uh, uh, a quasi-Irish uh, theme, as he did using, you know, real dependable actors like Victor McLaughlin and Barry Fitzgerald, he would do it. And he would, even if the movie itself wasn't Irish in nature, like, you know, uh, it, it, the, the, the Fort Apache uh, yeah. and the whole Cavalry trilogy, uh, there's always elements and scenes that incorporated the whole uh, Irish th thing. And it, it really begins in the silent era with John Ford, but it continues quite prominently with the informer, Victor McLaughlin, uh, as a, an informer against the, uh, the Irish uh, uh, revolution that was going on at the time. Right. Uh, and so, I mean, he, he always has those themes, but I think he wanted to make one of those loving, caring, really get the feel like you're living right there uh, on the island and, and the quiet man just completely embodies the gentle nature of, of, a, of a town, uh, maybe in Dublin or maybe even a smaller town than that. Well, I, yeah. Oh. Go ahead, John. I was just going to say, was Maureen O'Hara actually Irish or I thought she was an American actress. Oh. No. She was born in Ireland. She's been honored uh, in, in I, th I believe, if there's a Hall of Fame in Ireland. I don't know what exactly they call it, but she is a charter member. Uh, I believe okay. that she spent her last years in Ireland, but only coming out every once in a while. She would come out, for example, to, to visit the Turner Classic Movies Film Festival. But no, no, her heart, her whole, her whole being was in Ireland. So she is, she is a daughter uh, uh, of of the Irish culture and and very proud, very very proud of her heritage, extremely right. proud. So well, she had she did have a wonderful career and I and I loved everything she did. So and, and it began working with uh, with Alfred Hitchcock and Charles Lawton. You can do a whole lot worse with those two. Charles Lawton yeah. by that time they made the movie called Jamaica Inn. Now obviously not one of 
Alfred Hitchcock's better films. But but it was a catalyst for, for Charles Lawton to meet Maureen O'Hara and then cast her in The Hunchback of Notre Dame, which, and that, yes. that is a great uh, opportunity for Maureen O'Hara. It really sets in motion her stardom because that yes. was a great film and, and Charles Lawton was a great uh, uh, mentor. Although I will tell you, I hope I can get away with this story because it has a little bit of a, a body nature to it, B-A-W-D-Y. And that is, uh, even though she got along famously with Charles Lawton, in fact, she got along famously with all of the male stars she worked with, she did not get along with Lawton's wife, Elsa Lancaster. And in fact, later in her career, in fact, she, uh, Elsa, Elsa had written a book right before she died, her, her basically her memoirs. And one of the stories she tells is that... Uh, that she considered Maureen O'Hara the ice queen, that she could place butter between her legs and it would not melt. <laughs> <laughs> that was her description of Maureen O'Hara. And by oh. all accounts, I think it was an incorrect description. I believe that Lancaster was actually just jealous. <laughs> so uh, so uh, to, to full circle Wayne and O'Hara, I thought of one other reason why maybe they're not known as the romantic, because there wasn't as much yin and yang because there's no reason to believe that in any scene she couldn't have decked him. <clears throat> uh, in other words, <laughs> she wasn't the soft counter counterpart to the hard guy. Okay? She, well, it, you it, figured it, that it, it, if it, she uh, hold off, he'd be down for the count. Right. right. If you think about it, many of the, the, the parts that she played opposite Wayne was as, as the divorced wife. I mean, the former wife. You know, he didn't. He didn't remarry. He he stayed the the, the stable bachelor, but she always comes in at, after the fact. So it's hard to consider somebody a couple when actually the part she's playing is the former couple, the divorced yeah. wife. So that's yeah. that might be another reason why um, actually uh, they're not considered a pairing. But boy, they had. And I'm not kidding when I say that. Maybe as good a chemistry as any couple in the history of Hollywood's golden age. I, I really do believe that. Well, this has been another interesting travel uh, down the road to Ireland, in this case. But, Manny, uh, you never disappoint. Oh. Your font <laughs> is so deep. Um, I, could, I would be comfortable diving into your pool of knowledge anytime. And it sometimes incorporates margarine or butter, so who yeah. knew? <laughs> even, even a pat of butter. <laughs> hey, Manny, thanks so much. This has been great. A lot of fun, and of course, uh, we will all remember Maureen O'Hara very fondly. Oh, we can't leave without a little a little uh, bit of the Blarney from John, right? Oh, yes. Well, my bye, I'll tell you. In order uh, to honor St. Patrick's Day and the daughter of Ireland... Maureen O'Hara. May the road rise up to meet you, and the devil not know. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.